Welcome to Daytime Ottawa here on Rogers TV on this Monday. Hope you had a fabulous weekend. A reminder, we will give you all the details of our amazing mom makeover. We've got a contest that's running until May the 5th. That's the deadline at midnight on May the 5th. We'll give you all the details at the end of the show. But we start in the kitchen today. This is really exciting. An incredible story, an amazing journey that she's had so far. I'm joined by Phoebe Fuang Ha, owner of Bami Yes. Welcome, Phoebe. Great to have you here. Thank you. And uh, Ralph Janikis, he is the food and drink editor at Capital Eats. Welcome back, Rolf. Thank Great you. to have you here. And uh, we introduced our viewers to Rolf just a few weeks ago. And Rolf, um, Phoebe happened to be the first article you, you ever wrote, right, for, yeah. for Capital Eats. I, uh, I was lucky enough to see this uh, advertised banh mi place out of a commercial kitchen. And I went and I tried desperately for quite some time to get these sandwiches and just didn't work out. Okay. And then I heard from Phoebe that she had moved to a commercial kitchen in Canada. And I pursued it and once I had the sandwiches they reminded me of those sandwiches decades ago that I had in Chinatown in Toronto I thought this is the real deal nice and I can't believe it's here in Ottawa <laughs> and so I had to write a story about this woman I love it and Phoebe so this is um, this is a Vietnamese sandwich right yes uh, let's start I want to I want to start from the beginning so you came to Canada from Vietnam for schooling is that right that's right I'm an international student Okay. Yes. And then you took what in school? I do in business administration at Algonquin College. So you graduate with honors, right? And then you become a financial analyst. Yes. Yeah. For five years. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then where did this idea come from to, to start making these sandwiches? Um, so uh, just like many other people that like during COVID time, so my family member, they uh, just stay at home, they don't work. Right. So we just honestly like started to cook to eat, you know, right, yeah, yeah, because we have a lot of free time, right? I mean, I'm still working from home, but like my family, they have a lot of time. So okay. yeah, we just started to cook and then do something different. And then the bun me, it's just something very, uh, like just something like from our childhood, you know, like just yeah. something that we eat every day. Right. So we just started to make it and then make it and then share with everybody, with friends, and then, yeah, and then share on Facebook and then business coming. <laughs> That's amazing. So you started this from home and just friends and family and then people started finding out about it. And then you get a yeah. <laughs> knock at the door and there's a bylaw officer yes. standing at your doorway. Did, I mean, this is a cool story because I would have panicked. Did, was that how you felt at the time? Yes, I mean, like I was so scared. I freak out <laughs> when I open the door and then I see like, a gentleman there. Yeah. And then he just approached, he asked like, uh, did you cook from home and sell? And I just, you know, I say, yes, I'm sorry. Because it's just me, like I, I don't like. Right, you're just yeah. being honest. Yeah. yeah, and then honestly, because at that time I'm cooking right there, and then he told me like it smells so good in here. So you know, like you cannot really. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob, yeah. what, what did you love about about this sandwich that, well, that you had to find it? Well, first, uh, I think it was the the fact that the bread was the authentic style of bread. Right. This kind of bread is also what we have in Germany for breakfast. Oh, there, really? When, when I was over there for extended periods of time, you'd go to the local bakery, and in Germany you'll find a bakery on every block. Yeah. And you'll get these warm buns, they're about half the size, and then you put your meats and cheeses on. But when I bit into the, the bun and I tasted it and I felt the crunchiness, and of course it polluted my front <laughs> with <laughs> flakes. That's and a good I, thing. That's, that's, the, that's the real deal. Right. So I... Um, I love that, mm -hmm. and then I love the fact that the pate was so good because it reminded me again of some of the better banh mi sandwiches that I had in Toronto. Nice. So the whole experience was was absolutely delicious and fresh, and that was the other key thing, the freshness of it. Right, right. So that, yeah. So Phoebe, you're going to build a, a sandwich for us here today. Yes. Let's, let's yes, do it. Yeah, everyone. let's get started. Okay, yes. So we can start with, you know, okay, like... Okay, yeah, yeah, let's cool. get our gloves on. Cool. Yeah. Would you like to... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump in. Yeah. Get our hands dirty here. 
I actually did work behind the counter on the opening day at the store. Did you really? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's great. And business has been great, Phoebe? Yes, I'm oh, doing good. good. Yeah, nice. I get a lot of support from the, the neighbor, the yeah. Hintonburg. Yeah, everyone oh, is amazing. Oh, yeah, you're just down on Wellington yes. Street West here in, in yes. Hintonburg, right? Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's make a sandwich yeah. here. Okay, so maybe I will start yeah. step by step and you guys will learn from me. Oh, yeah, today. exactly. <laughs> okay, so the bread, then I just cut it. And you're not cheaping out. I mean, this is a huge sandwich. <laughs> Look at the size of this bun, man. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, so we cut like that. Okay. Maybe I wrap you one here. We cut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh I, I, oh, I see the crunch, eh? Oh, yeah. Great. There we go. Okay. Okay. So first step is the mayo. And just to remind that everything is made in-house. So you make your own mayo as well? Yes. Wow. And butter okay. and everything. Okay. The pickles, too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll let you. Uh, yeah, no, you you go ahead and build it because we we I don't want to run out of time, so everyone gets. So this is a pate. Yes. Yes. So what is it made of exactly? Uh, so it's made from uh, liver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Chicken liver and then the raw pork. Okay. Yeah. And then a lot of. Uh, then your secret spices that we don't want to share <laughs> because people have to come and get it from you. We don't want them yeah. making it at home, right? Yeah. But beside this, we also have, because this is the traditional one. Okay. But I know, like, not everyone can have pate. So we also right. have, like, uh, the real pork or real chicken beef, hala, vegetarian, vegan. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Like, a lot of options for everyone. Yeah, banh mi is really for everyone. And then this is Vietnamese ham. So. And what makes it, what makes it special, like, different from other hams? Um... I wouldn't say this is my signature because okay. I find the same recipe. Oh, yeah. I see. So okay. my signature is more like the bread here because it's back fresh every morning and make from scratch and then this thing. Nice. Yeah. This one, I, maybe someone else make better than me. I, I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not been my experience yeah. so far. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know your stuff, yeah, Rolf, so it's, yeah. it's top drawer. <laughs> I, I trust you. And what is this? What are you getting? Uh, so this one is uh, the pork belly. I mean, oh, like, nice. we call it that. Okay. But I just adjust it a little bit. I'm, I use, like, less fat because okay. I feel it's more for oh. everyone. Right, yeah, right. So, I just you like meat. You don't you don't skimp out on on the meats. That's for sure. <laughs> this is like a, a decent sized sandwich. So um, you're located. Let me just write uh, eleven twenty nine Wellington Street West. And of course you're on you're on social media. They can find you on on the website as well. Yes. What are you adding there? What is that? Uh, pork flush. Oh. Yes. Very yeah. good. Oh, I yeah. haven't ha I haven't had that in forever. Yes. That is amazing. All right. Yeah. And then I have uh, carrot pickles here. Okay. Yeah. And then veggie, of course. So. I'm tasting They're it already. Uh, oh, listen, my my teeth are watering. <laughs> just watching you put this together. Um, what a what a great story! Absolutely amazing story, Phoebe. I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Thank really you appreciate for the time. Me. Thank and you And I will so give much. this a, I will give this a taste test, okay? Yeah. And let you know everybody at home how good it is. Coming back a little bit later on in the show, we'll be back with more right after this. Don't go anywhere. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Rogers presents the 2024 East Coast Music Awards, live from Charlottetown Thursday, May 2nd. Starting with the red carpet at 6 p.m., followed by the awards show at 7. The East Coast Music Awards on Rogers TV. 
We know how amazing moms are, and just in time for Mother's Day, here's an opportunity to tell us how great she is and make her eligible to receive an exclusive makeover package. Just send us a few sentences telling us why your mom is so special and why she deserves a free professional makeover. The winner will receive an incredible makeover prize pack consisting of makeup and hair care services courtesy of Bruno Racine's salon and L.A. Barrett. They have both worked with some of the biggest stars in North America. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Hi guys, it's Maggie, Mrs. Calabash, and Derek. And whoa, we're back. Rogers Television. So please watch us on Rogers Television. We've just done our first show. It was Anytime Shrimp Special and an Asian Salad. So please remember Rogers Television, Mrs. Calabash Cooks. I'll see you guys. <laughs> everyone, I'm Sam LaPrad. This is your official invitation to join me for an hour to give. We're gonna learn all about Harmony House and get to meet an incredible woman by the name of Roberta. Join us then on an hour to give. Welcome back to the show. Okay, listen, I got a good shoe game. I got a good sock game. I've got a good suit game. I'm just not certain I have a good frame game. And I'm going to find out in just a moment. Joining me here on the show to talk about glasses and frames and the fashion behind them. I'm joined by Wendy Buchanan, eyewear image expert at Perceptions Eyewear. Welcome. Thank Great you, Great to have Derek. you here, Wendy. And Brenda Hollingsworth, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, our glasses model yes. on the show today. Because we wanted to show both, both men's and women's. Um, let's start off, first of all, talking about, you wanted to share three tips on on fit and yeah. I don't think a lot of people take time to make sure they have a good fit yeah so let's show it with one frame on you okay okay and what we're looking for is the eyes first we want the eye center because that's our connection to everybody right we make that and then they look at your shoes your collection yeah, of shoes exactly so we want to make sure the glasses are in harmony <laughs> um, and then we want the top of the frame to follow the same line as your brow or okay. curve okay and then we want some highlight here whether it's to highlight your cheekbones or to draw the eye up and out so that it's balanced nicely with your jawline so these these would be good for my for my face and basically. they're good for your style too it gives and you a little yeah. bit of color works with your jackets works with your shirts I love it and you know a lot of people you and I were talking about this before the show people are afraid of color and I don't yes. understand why because you look at look at Brenda's going yes because <laughs> Brenda you get stopped like you got it you have a good frame game oh yeah you get stopped on the street I right? do yeah, yeah definitely so these are these are some glasses that I stole out of the car <laughs> today these are not mine but we have mine and you'll see they're intense yeah, yeah. and wearing black and white black and white works great but then there's a whole range of colors that Brenda has in her wardrobe so we can start to add in those colors and as long as they're in the same color palette it's going to harmonize right. with everything she wears. You so own 45 pairs of glasses I is do. that right? And some days I still don't have the right glasses <laughs> for the right how, pair of shoes. I don't, I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> um, let's talk for let's talk uh, trends. What are we seeing when it comes to let's start with Brenda and yeah. eyewear for women. What are we seeing yeah. as far as trends go? Well and this is a great example. This is brand new for the spring, a lot of scalloped, a lot of detailing in the oh, eyewear. I love those. That's one big trend. The other is cat eye. Remakes yeah. on the cat eye, whether it's an extreme vintage or we could do something more subtle. Brenda's not subtle, so it also has to match <laughs> your personality. It's true, Brenda. And I'm this this is the strength which when we look at all of these colors it's all in the same palette, so it will work. It won't be matchy-matchy, but it'll right, be in harmony. Right. Uh, and then, so if we stick with the color theme, reds and oranges are uh, really big for color right now. Are those right wooden now. frames, the These ones I had wooden. as well? Yeah. yeah, they're both wooden, so customized. We're seeing a lot of really different material in frames now, not just your traditional metal and plastics. Right. They're bringing in a lot of cool recycled cotton, woods. Really? Yeah. Recycled Beautiful. cotton, okay. And so there's orange. That's something that's yeah. a little more risque, but that's her fun weekend pair. So when right. you do change your shoes, 
it really means the eyeglasses need to change too. It's a well, different vibe. What's like vibe. a don't? Like the, you know, I, when it comes to, you know, trying to match your eyeglasses and, and what you're wearing, are there don'ts that you always tell people? I would say don't get into a trend because it's a trend. Okay. Because people say, oh, this is trendy, buy this this season. Well, if it's not your style and we put it on. Now, for Brenda, if we put on something that, it's going to be hard to make Brenda look bad. But, uh, <laughs> but we're going to try. It's impossible. <laughs> we're going to try. Gonna go. But if we go too artsy, too busy, it's distracting, it's right. more artistic, it takes away from her professional vibe. And she's more daring dramatic than she is artsy. Gotcha. So we're yeah. really, we want it to be in sync with your persona and who you are so that when you put it on, just like some of your nice jackets, you yeah, let's try embrace these. that. See, I wouldn't have, like if I was looking, I wouldn't have chosen these. And then yeah. when you put them on me, I'm like, oh no, those are, those are cool. Is that why it's great to, to sit down with somebody like yourself? Yeah. We're looking at, like my styling system is looking at your facial features, your personal coloring, and then what's that clothing style. And that's what I call my spec style and it's okay. all encompassing. It's how you talk, how you walk, how you dress, plays into the trend that we're going to put on you that's going to be a wow. Right. And this is a trend, it's a little bit thicker, heavier, yeah. not as chunky as some of the plastics, a nice, thick, rich titanium, so it levels up your dress, too. Brenda, how's your frame game? Like, how many pairs of glasses do you own, would uh, you say? Well, I, I own nine, but okay, now, nine. as of today, <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to go to you're, 10. You're, you're, you're buying as, yeah. as you model, yeah. I yeah, see. Yeah, that's right. Here's the red trend Look on both this. of you. Yeah. yeah. Yours a little more understated, but a little bit fashion forward, not a traditional round. It's got some nice angled cuts, a nice right. mix of metal and plastic. So that levels it up when you're wearing a nice jacket and a shirt. And then this is actually, this is Brenda's conservative pair. This That's is your her, conservative yeah, pair. Yeah, okay. subtle pair, right. which yeah. is still plain to dramatic. <laughs> and if we look into sunglasses, one of the trends oh, yeah. for men is these. that vintage throwback like, to the has aviator. this ever gone out of style? Exactly. Honestly, right? They just right? do twists with material, and here you've got carbon fiber, tortoiseshell, and then a dark teal blue. So a nice uh, color combination. Brenda's Brenda, what do you get? Oh, Extreme look at this. Extreme black, like this. dramatic, vintage. Kind of that vibe. is Brenda, yeah. right there. Yeah. You two were walking out with those looks. two, I no, think. No, these are mine. Oh, are those yeah. yours? Oh, these are mine. See? See? Yeah. I knew right away. Yeah. I knew right away they would. So they you start to you. see yeah. the different vibes when we change the glasses. It changes your look. Yeah. It, how you embrace it. It changes, changes kind of how your you feel too. It does. Right? Yeah. Doesn't it? it like does. sunglasses immediately are like, oh, I probably look cool. Yeah. You, you take right? on a right persona. On. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. And this is very Vogue. She could be on the cover of Vogue with this. Absolutely. Yeah, that's all you I could need. be on the golf course with this. I, I'm not very good at golf, but as long as, <laughs> as my dad would say, as long as you look good, you can fool people that you might be decent at golf, right? <laughs> um, so, do you work with a particular brand, or do you work with uh, a number of different brands across the board? Yeah, and all independent boutique designers from all over the world. So really? Canadian designers, European designers, and these are boutique boutique designers that are working with beautiful materials and bringing a lot of color into optical, which is nice. I feel like we should just go for a walk down down Wellington Street or Richmond Road right now and just look cool. What do you say? We can do that. All right, we let's can do, do that. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you, <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. Dennis. We'll be back with more right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm Carolyn King, and I'm a member of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the creator of the Moccasin Identifier. Philip Cote, an artist in Toronto here, took and redrew uh, real moccasins. 
before starting over with the children. The idea is that they would research whose land their school is built on, near, or what treaty area they're in. And the educational kit that we have has all that information in there. And the children just, like, I love it. My dream is that this province will be covered with moccasin identifiers within the next decade, and they will forever know whose land they're on. That's the goal. Educate and awareness with a nice, simple little program called the Moccasin Identifier. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Join us for the new season of Ottawa Storytellers, right here on Rogers TV. to Daytime Ottawa. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago and uh, that is uh, food insecurity and more along the lines of food waste and the amount of food waste that we have in this country and when you look at it from household to household it adds up to a lot of money and a lot of waste and a lot of food going into landfills and, they, and we don't have to do that. My next guest is um, the executive, an executive chef with Ottawa Lions Heart Inc. Stephen LaSalle joining me. Stephen welcome. Great, great to have you here. So yeah I, I mean your background is, is is it as an executive chef, right? You and I were talking before yeah. the show. You've been on the show in the past as a, as a chef. Um, when did you start changing your mind about, you know, sort of food insecurity? Well, I, I uh, had opened a couple hotels. I'd opened three restaurants. I wanted a little bit of a, a change in my career. And uh, this opportunity to uh, work at, at a charity called Lionhearts uh, popped up. Uh, I'll be cooking soon, creating a lot of meals, uh, but the uh, the base is still the same, uh, providing food for people. Uh, one is in a hotel, whether it's a nice meal. Uh, in at Lionhearts, it's more uh, for organizations uh, feeding, uh, feeding and caring for people, our most vulnerable friends and neighbors. Yeah. Um during your experience working in the hotel, food and restaurant industry, did you see a lot of waste? Is that part of the inspiration here? There is a bit, yeah. And definitely there's opportunities on catering. So we've uh, we've onboarded some new partners since I've joined Lionhearts, uh, mm -hmm. some catering partners, whether it's uh, catering partners at uh, museums or hotels, restaurants, schools. Uh, so we rescue the food so after okay. a service. So uh, for, you know, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a large college will have, uh, you know, you know 900 students at lunch there's a little bit of extra or a sports game TV place we rescue the food after the games Wow we bring it back to our facility we sort through it and we say hey what, what could we do with this what, what organization could use this maybe it's pizzas for an after-school program or maybe I've got a couple components that would uh, well I got this from here and I can make a meal out of it and then I can distribute that meal um, to another agency wow. uh, what a great people. idea yeah. so Lionhearts it didn't start here in Ottawa it started in Kingston it's, is that right started in Kingston about 10 years okay. 10 years ago um, our founder will tell you about the time he rescued 800 pounds of strawberries took it back to a church basement started <laughs> oh calling God. people if you want to okay so five pounds here uh, and then that uh, you know spawned into to line hearts in Kingston uh, with many food uh, food rescue partners from uh, schools food service companies uh, caterers uh, and more um, one of them is uh, Cobb's bread yeah, uh, yeah I'm familiar with so, Cobbs. So we were yeah. rescuing Cobbs bread and kinks, and they said, hey, we're opening five locations in uh, in Ottawa. Can you come and rescue the bread? So they said, all right. <laughs> so So they came to Ottawa. So we rescue bread from Cobbs uh, okay. seven nights a week. There's five locations. Um, and uh, then that kind of grew into more uh, opportunities. We do, uh, in, in Ottawa, we do more than just food rescue. So we work with um, generous uh, corporate donors, uh, mostly for their excess food and goods. So we work with... Uh, Amazon. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, so their warehouses, uh, donations from them, from household goods to uh, to pantry food items to uh, 
operational supplies to furniture, and then we uh, distribute that through a network of over 70 community partners. This is in incredible. I, I, so how were you introduced? How did you find out about Lion Hearts? Um, through, the, through the farmer's market. Oh, through, really? Through one of my okay. So that's something that we're starting up on May 5th. So we're going to be the uh, food rescue partner for the Ottawa Farmer's Market on Lansdowne. Okay. So if there's anything the vendors don't want to bring back, uh, we'll collect it. We'll bring it back to our warehouse. Either we'll cook it when our kitchen's operational or we'll distribute it just like we distribute uh, other donated food uh, to our weekly uh, um, uh, list of partners. So do you have then uh, uh, volunteers that, that help out? Yeah, yeah. If I, uh, We have volunteers for uh, sorting the goods, sorting the food, volunteer drivers. Uh, if, you're, if anyone's interested in volunteering, they can contact us at ottawa at lionhearts.ca. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Um, you've also got a fundraiser. Actually, before we get to the fundraiser, so, I mean, it, it does take, it does take, there, there are costs involved in, in doing this. So where, where did the funds come from to uh, run the program? Whether it's, uh, it's grants or it's, it's uh, the generosity of the community, whether it's uh, a one-time donation or a monthly donation. Uh, if anyone's interested in uh, that that's uh, lionhearts.ca as well. Nice. Um, but uh, one thing in my short time in uh, in food security is that we're better together. Yeah. So so like these are some of the things from the weekend. We did a food drive with Ottawa Atletico. Yeah, how'd at, that go? At, at the game. So it was great. It was about uh, uh, about enough food for f 500 meals at the game. So it was great support wow. from the team uh, to be able to have us out there because uh, we're also rescuing food from the concessions and the catering at uh, TD Place. Wow. And uh, and at the farmers market. Uh, when it whenever it turns outdoors, right. so it was a fun way for uh, for us to kind of boost the season of uh, food rescue at Lansdowne. Wow, that, that just uh, the fact that you've gotten all these partnerships on board already is so impressive. You've got a fundraiser coming up as yes, well, right? Yes, yes, with uh, Raphael Peruvian Cuisine, uh, probably the most exciting restaurant in the city right now, I think. Nice. Uh, Chef Lizardo uh, and I had opened the Andaz Hotel together, so we okay. so we had uh, years of collaborating on uh, menus, uh, and then over the pandemic, he uh, he built the basis for Raphael Peruvian Cuisine. So when I switched to uh, food security. And I wanted to get the word out there. I wanted to fundraise. I called uh, Lazardo up and said, "Hey, can we do something together?" Before I was done the sentence, uh, he was saying yes. Uh, and I'm so excited about about his cuisine and to cook with him again. Yeah. So we we had designed fun. menus together for Feast and Revel, the restaurant at Andaz for okay. years. Yeah. So now to be able to kind of do something special in his space uh, together, so it's really special for me. So we're inviting uh, everyone to join us on May 7th. Uh, if you're interested, you can uh, book on Open Table through the okay. uh, Raphael's. Um, restaurant page. So what do you have planned? Have, well, you, have it, you guys worked on a yeah, menu yet? Yeah. So I'm going to highlight some of our rescue partners. So I'm going to do some, uh, kind of a spring vegetables on toast as an amuse bouche using Cobb's bread. Okay. Uh, we get mushrooms donated from us from Hardy Mushrooms. So I'm doing a little spin on, uh, you know, instead of steak and mushrooms, it's going to be lion's mane, lion hearts, lion's mane. Nice, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, using lion's mane mushrooms from Hardy because they're so generous to us um, and uh, kind of garnish it with a little bit of beef. And then we're working on through some Peruvian flavors with Lizardo uh, with some great Canadian seafood because that was one of the things we got to work together at the Yondas with was bringing in really amazing uh, fresh Canadian seafood. So nice. there's, there's going to be some I was of that just at Yondas for, for an event actually just the other day and cool. they're, they're still doing well, some great stuff. Well tell them if they've stuff. got food to rescue to give me a call. Yeah I will. I'll, Absolutely. I'll, I'll show up in a refrigerated <laughs> van. I love it. Uh, people People can find out all the information at lionhearts.ca, Stephen? Lionhearts.ca. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Really Thank appreciate you. it. What, cool. a, what a great initiative. Again, uh, the Chef's Fundraising Dinner at uh, Raphael Peruvian Cuisine on May the 7th at 6 p.m. We'll be back with more right after this. Don't go anywhere. We know how amazing moms are, and just in time for Mother's Day, here's an opportunity to tell us how great she is and make her eligible to receive an exclusive makeover package. Just send us a few sentences telling us why your mom is so special and why she deserves a free professional makeover. The winner will receive an incredible makeover prize pack consisting of makeup and hair care services courtesy of Bruno Racine's Salon and L.A. Barrett. They have both worked with some of the biggest stars in North America. Watch Podium, exclusively on Rogers TV. Uh, 
Sam LaPrade, host of Ottawa Business Matters. We're going to gather here every single week and speak about business here in the capital. We're going to inspire, influence, and inform. Join us for season four of Simply Cooking by Umchef, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock, right here on Rogers TV. Welcome back to the show. A real food focus show uh, for you today. Uh, we're talking about great food and then food insecurity and certainly food insecurity when you talk about that uh, I'm sure comes to mind is the Shepherds of Good Hope and they put on wonderful events to raise funds here in the community and uh, Taste for Hope 80% sold out so far so make sure you get your tickets here to give us all the details. David Gorley, CEO of the Shepherds of Good Hope joins me. Welcome. Great Thank to you, have Derek. you here. Thank you for Welcome having us. Welcome back and Nick Lemire, owner of Mirabelle Management joining us as well as one of the, the great sponsors of the event. Welcome, mm -hmm. Nick. Great to have you here as well. Thank you. Uh, David, so it's great success so far. 80% sold out. I yeah. mean, you're probably not surprised, right? Well, it's our 12th uh, annual Taste for Hope. And you know, this morning I was crunching numbers. This event has made $1.1 million for wow. Shepherds of Good Hope. That's that amazing. doesn't include this year. So we're really hoping for a great night of community, of people coming together, enjoying food, enjoying beverages, and of course, enjoying each other's company as they learn more more about the important work that we do at Shepherds of Good Hope, which is why we're so proud to have someone like Nick and Maribel helping us out this year. Yeah, Nick, why did you want to get involved? I think it's pretty um, evident now that there's a major housing crisis. Yeah. Uh, and I think with some of our partners, uh, some of the work that we do in affordable housing, uh, we really wanted to work with the community and uh, Shepherds to uh, just kind of push this a little bit further uh, in the goals that they're trying to achieve. So tell me more about Mirabel. For those that aren't mm -hmm. familiar with Mirabel, uh, tell us what, what you do, what you specialize in. Uh, so we do a lot of um, strategic philanthropy, um, as well as general taxes, accounting, residential property management. Uh, kind of full service for business or individuals. Yeah, yeah. Um, David, let's talk about the Shepherds of Good mm -hmm. Hope because I think you know some people. You know, they they drive by and they they, they know that you know you're you're helping feed people, but it, but it's more than that. Sure. Um, talk yeah. about some of the programs and services. Yeah, you, offer. you know, Derek, we're all over the city of Ottawa, from yeah. from Canada to Montreal Road and in between. We offer supportive housing services, sheltering services, and of course we tackle food insecurity. So we started 41 years ago as a soup kitchen. We 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 now call it a community kitchen. Yeah. But that's how that was our origin, you know, 41 years ago. Uh, now we've evolved to address the true needs of those experiencing trauma in our community. So we want to make sure that we're as full service as possible to support the highest acuity of individuals who are going through a, a tough period. Mm -hmm. Because homelessness is not a permanent experience for yeah. most people. It is a temporary experience. So in the community, we ask people to see an individual through their homelessness, recognizing that they have every opportunity to fulfill the best life possible. Uh, you know, I mean, Nick said it so well, right? We've been talking housing crisis and housing mm -hmm. crisis. Is, is that first and foremost uh, on, on your minds at the Shepherd of Good Hope that, that this starts with housing? Absolutely. You know, and, and the housing we offer people is permanent housing, Derek. So we don't offer any kind of, we, where we don't impose judgment on people and say, right. you have housing for a year or two or five. You have that housing, that unit that's fully furnished with wraparound, harm reduction, wraparound supports, health support supports, social service supports. So an individual, again, is stabilized with their trauma and, again, lives the best quality of life possible. Nick, have you been to the event in the past? I haven't. It's my first time. It's your first time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my goodness. I'm you've been missing excited. out. I know. David, am I right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. But it's going to be a party this year with Nick and, and, <laughs> and so many other people. You know, we're going to have 550 people, uh, guests, uh, and then probably another 100 volunteers and staff. So we're going to have almost 700 
your people amazing. Uh, with 20 chefs, beverage partners, event partners, it's going to be one amazing. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've been I've been to many in in the past, and I, the experience is is unlike others that that you go to. I mean, for those that have not experienced it before, David, this isn't a sit down That's rubber right. chicken dinner. That's right. Uh, kind of event, right? That's Just right. describe what the event. We like. may have chicken though, but it yeah, won't be a rubber there chicken. Yeah, there might be chicken. Nothing <laughs> against chicken. I, I, I just want to. Yeah. No. Th if this the is... chicken farmers of Ontario are watching, <laughs> don't don't tweet at me, okay? <laughs> this is a stand up mix and mingle, right? And and with the twenty chefs, these are local celebrity chefs, hotels, restaurants, uh, beverage uh, beverage partners, food partners, and they're offering you know sample like hors d'oeuvres, sample yeah. sizes. Yeah. So people have an opportunity to go and get some samples. We 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 have all kinds of variety from from vegan options to gluten free options. We have Joe Thottengall there. We have oh, David yeah. Godso there. We have all these incredible David Vinoya from the Hilton Hotel. Oh from yeah, Tula. we just had we just yeah. had him on. He, yeah. he, last year he had uh, a, a, the flame not the flamethrower but the little blowtorch <laughs> oh, yeah, the, there like the burner, with, yeah. with the muscles going and and everybody was talking about it. <laughs> everybody the lineups galore. And that's what we want because we want these chefs and the and the restaurants and the hotels to to be feel supported because yeah. they're donating their time and they're donating right. their food. Yeah, well, we had Ben Baird from uh, the Pelican yeah, Seafood Market yeah. and Grill, and he's like, I have never shucked so many oysters in my <laughs> life than when I do this event because it's always packed. Yep. Um, the giving continues, though, right? Yes. Obviously, you buy your ticket, but when you get there, the giving continues throughout the night. Let's talk about some of those things. Sure. You, you have an auction sure. again this year. Yeah, so what we're going to do this year, Derek, a little like we did last year. You were there. You saw we, we put up a, a supportive housing bed on the stage, yes. and we asked people to, to buy beds. This year, we're going to replicate an entire supportive housing room. So it's nice. going to be the bed, it's going to be the dresser, it's going to be the chair, the table. We really want our guests to get the full experience of what a room is and the right. dignity that comes with a home for those who experience chronic homelessness. And we're going to ask our guests to purchase individual furniture items Amazing. or with through the auction through Ryan Watson, an entire room for $2,500. Um, you have something called the giving tree as yes. well? Yes, right? we have. It's the, the tree of hope, yeah. the giving tree. Uh, it's a raffle, and we're going to okay. have some really cool prizes, uh, local prizes. Um, so you, you purchase a beacon, which is our, our, our logo, and then in, 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 and then we'll have a raffle at the end of the night, choose a couple of numbers. Nice. That's right. Yeah. Nick, are you excited now? I'm very excited. <laughs> I've been excited, I think, since we first met. So I, I can imagine. Right. Well, and yeah, and David's a good salesman too, right? <laughs> I, I mean, if you if you haven't bought tickets yet, I I, I don't know how you're not going to go. But and I mean, this is uh, you know, people always think that uh, you know they, they look at individuals, right? They don't realize that this is an impact on the entire community. That's right. By helping out and and helping to support the Shepherds of Good Hope. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, David. I really you. appreciate you, you joining me. Uh, Taste for Hope, by the way, is at the Shaw. Center. So new venue this year, uh, May 15th at 6 p.m. There is a VIP at 5 p.m. Is it sold out? It yes? is. It is. I thought so. It is sold out, but 80% <laughs> sold out for the main event. So make sure you get your tickets. Taste for Hope, SGH.ca for your tickets. We'll be back with more right after this. This is a brain in urgent need of mental health care. But because three out of every four Indigenous people experience racism in health care, she may not get the help she needs. Become an ally. Rise above racism in health care. Welcome to the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Stalo people. The Stalo are people of the river. I'm so thankful for the courage and resiliency of our ancestors who lived on this land since time immemorial. Each of us have gifts from the Creator, and our Creator has a plan and purpose to be fulfilled in our territory. As we embrace our traditional teachings, we can lead the next generation into the fullness of what our Creator designed. Our shared history reveals a broken relationship. But as all Canadians commit to hear truth, acknowledge injustice, we can learn to walk in our traditional way, let's with a good heart and a good mind. 
Then all of our lives will be enriched. Kwasai. Learn all about the creation of the National Capital Region on The History of Ottawa According to Phil Jenkins on Rogers TV. You're watching an interesting local show on Rogers TV and you want to know more. That's when you head to rogerstv.com. Our website provides more information about our programs, our hosts, our schedule, and about how you too can get involved with Rogers TV. Visit us online at rogerstv.com. Welcome back to the show. Uh, it's, you know, people can, are, are doing amazing things around the world. And I, I always say this to people, you know, they, you know the media, they, 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 it's always negative. Um, that's why I love doing this show, because we get to showcase some of the incredible things and some of the incredible people that are in front of those things. And I am joined by uh, Michelle Tracy, who, when's the last time you were here? Oh, I can't think? remember. It's like a decade. Maybe. maybe when I sang with Gaga. Yeah, Possibly? I think so. I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Michelle, by the way, is a presenter with uh, No Time for That Anti-Bullying Society, but you've been on quite a journey. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your musical journey. Tell everybody at home, you know, where, where that's taken you over sure. the last few years. So last time you may have seen me on here, I had sang with Lady Gaga in 2014. That kind of made my life crazy. <laughs> I got signed to a major label. I had a Billboard Hot 100 called Armageddon, which you may have heard on Great the radio. Great song, yeah. And after that, I got dropped from my label. I entered a singing competition called The Launch. Won The Launch yeah. in 2019. And then last year, I auditioned for American Idol. And I just got back from American Idol. And how uh, I go? brought a little thing what to show you What did you bring? You what have you got? My golden you ticket. You got the golden ticket. What mm. was that experience like? I mean, uh, the, the nice thing about that show is you do get a lot of behind the scenes, right? Yeah. But, I mean, you got the true behind the scenes. What was it What was it like? Honestly, this experience changed my whole life forever. It taught me, you know, who I want to be and who I don't want to be, okay. which is very important. Interesting. And I also made friends uh, that I'll have the rest of my life that healed me, that helped me grow every day, and um, it's it's been wonderful. So I have a little a little crew of best friends. Nice. And, uh, well, and you it's know, wonderful. it's interesting that you said who you want to be and who you don't want to be because not many people share that. But what do you mean by who you don't want to be? I mean that I want to be the most authentic version of myself always, no matter what room I'm in. And I think it's really cool, and I met a lot of artists there that really cared about the music, um, and especially the judges, Lionel Richie. We love him. <laughs> nice. and, and just people who celebrate music and, and up-and-coming artists and truth-telling, you know? Like, right. being who you are and growing up and being confident in who you are and not putting on anything and not chasing anything Because you haven't anymore. always been like that. No. Right? You've met me. Uh-huh. So yeah. I, I, until this American Idol experience felt like I had to chase something that wasn't who I was, I guess. So I'm finally sitting here and I'm like, I am the person that I always dreamed nice. of being. And with this No Time for That Anti-Bullying Society, I get to go around to schools right now. We're doing Ontario and Quebec. Nice. And I get to go around to schools all over the place and talk to kids and say, you know what? I was bullied. I was a loser. I grew up alone, had nothing. And then, you know, I grew up and I found my people and my voice. And I get to go to these schools and say, you can do that too. And you know, nice. today I went to my elementary school. Really? Yeah. Your childhood, I love, we're, yeah. we're just checking out some, some photos of you on, on tour here. I went to my elementary school and I said, look, I had no idea I'd be back here because I didn't know I'd grow up and be this age, you know, because of right. how, how bad the bullying got. And what I know was, you've Did the bullying happen at, 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 at that my school? elementary and my high school. I mean, I still get was bullied Was it hard today. to go back? In a way? It was hard, but it was so beautiful. Yeah. And I was so embraced. And we got to go back to my old house today where I started my first songs, where I grew up with my family. And it was such a nice experience to be there. And thanks to BRP and their Ride Out Intimidation Initiative and, and Dollar a Day Foundation for sponsoring this whole tour, yeah. I get to be the person for these kids that I always needed. You know, and you I get needed to, yeah, someone and you, to come you in. You get to be your authentic self, and yeah. you also get to do what you always dreamed of doing, and that's yeah. entertaining people, right? Because music's a big part of what you're doing. Healing people through music. Yeah. And we go in, and I sing for these kids, and you know, I think I'm inspiring them, but really I'm standing there and I'm going, wow. And today when I, cr I was so emotional, I cried and, and 
we had just talked about how it's important to cry and mm. that it's okay to cry. I and agree. Then it, yeah. And then when I cried, I said, I'm so sorry for crying. And this kid said, it's okay to cry. You're brave and you're strong. And I was like, wow, this is changing my life in the same way it's changing theirs. I it's think we have wonderful. a little video of, of you singing at, at one of the events. I, I, I see if they've, they've got, have you got that, guys? Can we throw to that? It's So fulfilling, hey! Eh? It's see all the kids like getting involved, right? And and uh, it's giving me my purpose back, and it's making me believe that I deserve good things. Yeah, you probably know. I was bullied relentlessly in uh, elementary school it. myself too, and uh, I know about you know being emotional and you know being able but to look cry. look at you! And, like you, yeah, I've, for I've sure. known you since I was like what twelve years yeah, old. Yeah, And you've been a big inspiration to me too, of someone who is always honest and vulnerable and you sit here and you share your story with people and you have people come on the show and I remember growing up watching the show and going wow I can see myself in you and I can see mm -hmm. myself in the people you have here and I'm so grateful that you still continue to do this and I'm sure you don't get enough flowers for this so I'm giving you them <laughs> now, now listen I feel Thank grateful you. too right Thank to be able to do like uh, much like you when I when I was a young when I was young I didn't want to sing I wanted to be on TV I wanted to. Well, I'm, I wanted I'm to be an actor. I wanted to, you know, get in film and, and television. Um, this tour t takes you to where next? So right after today, we're going to Quebec. Okay. So we're going to spend the next couple of weeks in Quebec and um, and visit visit some students over there. Nice. So and then the, the the idea too is to to expand this right yeah, beyond so, Quebec and Ontario. So this is also we also do virtual. So okay. we have, um, if we can't make it to the schools, we meet them online and share stories. And it's basically my, my story growing up and how I got to where I am today and singing and healing through music. And everybody sings along. It's so much fun. I love it. And, and then hopefully, we're hoping next year to do Canada-wide and go nice. to more schools. And, you know, it's a dream come true to be involved in No Time for That, Anti-Bullying Society. I'm like... It's a dream. But you're changing lives, and even if it's just one person at each event, one young person at each event. And I've seen it happen. Event. I'm yeah. seeing the impact happen, and um, it's mind blowing. It's amazing. I'm really grateful. So great to catch up with you. Nice to see you. Congratulations, great. Thank you. Uh, nice to see you too. Uh, NTFT.ca to find out more information about this amazing initiative. We'll be back with more right after this. We know how amazing moms are, and just in time for Mother's Day, here's an opportunity to tell us how great she is and make her eligible to receive an exclusive makeover package. Just send us a few sentences telling us why your mom is so special and why she deserves a free professional makeover. The winner will receive an incredible makeover prize pack consisting of makeup and hair care services courtesy of Bruno Racine's Salon and L.A. Barrett. They have both worked with some of the biggest stars in North America. Rogers presents the 2024 East Coast Music Awards, live from Charlottetown, Thursday, May 2nd. Starting with the red carpet at 6 p.m., followed by the awards show at 7. The East Coast Music Awards on Rogers TV. At your local legion, we're marching to the beat of a different drum on a mission to support veterans, to have fun, and to welcome everyone to our ranks. You don't have to be a veteran to join the legion. And as a member, you'll join thousands of others serving our veterans, our communities, and our country. Oh yeah, and our member perks program will save you thousands on shopping, dining, products, and services across the country. Join us at legion.ca. Hey everyone, I'm Sam LaPrade. This is your official invitation to join me for an hour to give. We're going to learn all about Harmony House and get to meet an incredible woman by the name of Roberta. Join us then on an hour to give. Every year, 
Dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca. Well, you know, it's exciting when you, whether it's your, your first song or opening up a restaurant or your first book, there's just something so amazing about that experience. And my next guest has written her first book and it's called Whiteout. I'm joined by the author Kathleen Lee. Kathleen, welcome. Great Thank to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So first of all, did you, did you grow up writing at all or did, is this something that happened just recently um, in life? It's a much more recent thing. So okay. I wrote this, I was in my fifties and, um, but I've, been an avid reader all my life and I got that from my mom she she instilled that in me so nice. um, and uh, so yeah but I've always thought I had a book in me and I finally got around to doing it which I'm very happy to do so uh, <laughs> you had a book in you so what was the inspiration then behind whiteout um, so I was actually on a date many many years ago and um, the uh, the man said something and I I'm sorry, I don't even remember his name, but anyway, it's okay. not my husband. Um, he said, well, as long as it's not your husband, then you're safe, Kathleen. Yeah. Um, but he said, you know, it must be really difficult being a single mother, and you know, all that. And I'm like, well, I, I guess. I mean, I've, I, it's not something new to me. I've I've grown into it, and I've I've coped, and I'm fine. But it got me thinking about what if someone was put in a situation where they were solely responsible for the care of a person with no background, no experience whatsoever. And what would that struggle be like? Okay. And that's where it was born from. So that's the basis of, of, of the book. So yes. tell me a little bit, I, I, we don't want to give away too much, but tell me a little bit about the storyline. So the story is about two sisters that have grown up in a very tumultuous household. And the, the youngest one, Maggie, uh, goes to Ottawa to go to school. They live in Brockville, but okay. they, she comes to Ottawa. And then something horrific happens, and Maggie is thrust into a caregiver role. And, and with someone she loves very much and, and so she has to struggle with that and she loses a lot of her independence and freedom and struggles with that as well so yeah yeah and, and it's a great perspective because oftentimes people don't look at what the caregiver is is going through right. sometimes it can even be more difficult <clears throat> mm -hmm. for the caregiver depending on 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 the type of situation yeah. um, so what was your process then of, of writing the book walk me through that so initially I had this idea that Maggie and Nika came from this very loving family and I thought, oh, that's a little boring. It needs to be a little more conflicted. So it okay. was a very, not a great household. And so what I did was, I first I just sat down and thought I'd write. And I'm like, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, or we'd all be doing it. Yeah. I'd have a book. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up kind of laying out what I wanted to happen um, throughout the book with Maggie and with um, the other characters. Okay. And I actually do it from two perspectives. Oh, and okay. I kept a spreadsheet, which I don't know how people wrote with without spreadsheets before they were invented, right. but big help. And I wrote it a chapter at a time whenever I had some free time because I was also working full time as I do now. And uh, uh, eventually I got a first draft. So wow, that was good for you. a huge accomplishment. Did yeah. you know the end before you started writing or did it come to you? I knew the end did, in eh? a way, okay. and, but the way it finally kind of manifested was quite organic as I wrote it. And so there's a bit of kind of plotting and what they call pantsing, you know, writing right. by the, yeah. the seat of your pants yeah. or plotting. So there's a little bit of both in that, yeah. Uh, you're self-published. Tell me the, the the decision to self-publish. So once I'd finished writing this, um, I tried the traditional route, and that's where you have to find an agent. Yeah. And uh, that's a little soul-crushing. It really <laughs> lots is. And, and lots uh, from, of rejection. I mean, you're not the only author to tell me that. Yeah. I mean, so many authors now just turn right away to self-publishing because they say that uh, unless you've already written 12 books, yes. like they're not even yes. interested in, in reading your draft. Yes. Exactly. You know, which is too bad. And a lot of times you don't even get a rejection. You just don't hear from them. Right. Or you might see a tweet and that says, oh, I, you know, my manuscript list is closed, don't bother. And it's like, okay. So, so, so did you have to research yourself then to figure out how you're going to go about self-publishing? Well, it was really interesting. I was traveling in England and I met a woman there on my tour who knew someone in Montreal that did self-publishing. She helped publisher or helped author.
authors self-publish. And okay. I thought, so I got in touch with her. Her name is Carolyn Flower, and she was she's an author's coach, but she also helps with the, the whole Amazon publishing process. Right. And she was amazing. She really helped me understand the steps that are involved. She hooked me up with some great editors that were that's key to having yeah. that sort of thing. Like you can't just go by your first draft. Uh, that's the story that you tell yourself and then right. you need to clean it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So she was really helpful with that and then also with the um, the artwork on the cover as well. So yeah, that worked out really well. What about marketing, Kathleen? Because that, that that's a, another challenge, right? Is, mm -hmm. okay, I wrote a book, now how do I tell everybody yeah. about it? I don't know right? why everyone just doesn't know it's wonderful. <laughs> but, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> I, it, that's where I struggle the most. I, I don't okay. have that kind of background at all. I, I worked in IT and admin all my life, so I'm still working that out. Um, but there's a lot you can do with Amazon, and I try to do uh, community events like this, like book signings. Right. Uh, there's a community newspaper that I've you know gotten oh, into nice. that sort of thing, um, and. Uh, just word of mouth on social media as much as I can. I try to have a big, uh, big presence on social media. Oh, that, and the, yeah, that is so incredibly important. It no is. matter what type of artist you are in in, in today's world. What about feedback? What, what kind of feedback? The feedback are you getting? has been very good. Yeah, yeah lots of five star reviews, nice. and not not from people I know either, like people that I've never even met. So. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I know that's awesome. No, but it's true, right? I mean, everyone <laughs> there's that perception of oh, well, you know, the five star reviews. If you're a restaurant or a writer or whatever, it's you yeah. know, family and friends. Only, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. nice to hear. So, but what really helps authors is if people do write reviews because that right. raises your profile in Absolutely. social media and um, on things like Goodreads and on Amazon as well. Uh, so I'm guessing that's where people go to get a copy is Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, or if you go to my website, I can also arrange if it's in the Ottawa area for home delivery. I, I have a, a stock of my own books as well. So Fantastic. either way, yeah. Well, congratulations on this. I know how much hard work goes in. I mean, that, that's that's not a thin book, my friend. <laughs> That's, that's that's an incredible amount of work. Um, you can find Kathleen all over social media, as she said, including LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, now called X, you name it, or uh, KathleenLeeAuthor.com as well. We'll be back with more right after this. Join us for the new season of Ottawa Storytellers, right here on Rogers TV. Podium, exclusively on Rogers TV. Prad, host of Ottawa Business Matters. We're going to gather here every single week and speak about business here in the capital. We're going to inspire, influence, and inform. We have an amazing contest going on right now. It's our Amazing Mom Makeover Contest. Uh, we're so excited about this. Keep those entries coming because the deadline is May 5th at midnight. Here are all the details. We know how amazing moms are and just in time for Mother's Day, here's an opportunity to tell us how great she is and make her eligible to receive an exclusive makeover package. Just send us a few sentences telling us why your mom is so special and why she deserves a free professional makeover. The winner will receive an incredible makeover prize pack consisting of makeup and hair care services courtesy of Bruno Racine Salon and L.A. Barrett. They have both worked with some of the biggest stars in North America. Flash, amazing mom. Make sure you get your mom into that because uh, Bruno and LA, they do such amazing work. They're just located down here in Westboro. We're going to do the big reveal on Monday, May 13th. So live here on the air, Bruno and Leslie Ann will join us on the show along with the winner for the big reveal. So again, make sure you get those entries in. Uh, if you, by the way, have a story idea, don't be shy. Reach out to me on social media. You can find me all over Facebook and Twitter. And of course, you can visit us at rogerstv.com. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com.
roasted the most perfectly golden brown marshmallow you'd ever seen. And the crowd went wild! Rogers TV invites you to let your imagination roam as we present you with a new season of Ottawa Storytellers. Each week, we'll bring you a collection of original and creative stories presented for children of all ages. Join us for the new season of Ottawa Storytellers right here on Rogers TV. We know.